We pray that our hearts can be. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, and we commit. Bless your name, right Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hands. Holy Spirit, you're welcome. Yes, Come Lord. Teach us, teach us the word. Yes, our Lord. Hearts are open for you to teach us right on the pages Have of your way, Jesus. Heart. So that as we live tonight, Lord, we will live with understanding. We will live with wisdom so we can enjoy a lifetime of favor like your word tells us. We celebrate you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. For the Thank you, Lord. On the cross. Thank you for your body that was broken. Thank you for your blood that was shed for our redemption. Thank, Thank you, Lord. Spirit. We celebrate you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God. Amen. 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 Thank you, family, for joining us tonight. And uh, today we've come to just sit at the feet of Jesus Christ to learn from him so that we can be filled with his word, understand his principles, his precepts, so that we will not be lost in this world, so that we will not fall prey to the, to the uh, plans and the strategies of the enemy. Amen. So, beloved, we're going to partake of the Lord's Supper, but before we do so, I just want to do a quick recap and let us know what we are look, taking a look at tonight. One month ago, we began with a series titled Favor with People. So tonight is going to be part two of that series. And our base text for this series, which will last a very long time, is uh, was from and is from Luke chapter 2, verse 52. And it says, and Jesus kept increasing. He kept increasing in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and people. Amen. So our goal is to understand how to keep increasing in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and people. And the reason why we're interested in this text is because Jesus is the one whom we desire to become like, amen. And because he kept increasing, increasing in specific areas of his life, we have also decided to emulate him. We decided to understand how he kept increasing in favor with people, amen. So that is where we got this particular title from. So last time we began, we spoke on the subject matter of um, 10 biblical patterns on how to keep increasing in favor with people. 10 biblical patterns on how to keep increasing in favor with people. And we only examined one last time. And today we're going to continue with the others and we'll just go as far as the Lord leads us tonight. And one of the things we um, said about favor in context of what we'll be talking about is that we define favor as when someone is willing to invest their life, their time, their resources, their credibility to help you and I achieve our goals, amen. That is how we coined the definition of favor in context of this particular series. When someone is willing to invest their life, their time, their resources, their credibility to help you achieve your goals. We saw that in the life of Jesus Christ, many people invested their life, their time, their resources, their credibility to make sure that the ministry of Jesus and his life here on earth was a success. And uh, a few points to keep in mind as we begin tonight is this. Um, we said that we favor is a principle Amen. That favor is a principle. And we also said that favor is a response. Talking about principle, we want to look at the word of God to see what those principles are that we can apply in order to perpetually increase in favor. And as we activate those principles, we now receive a response. Amen. When somebody responds to the principles that we have implemented, we see those people, those people acting in our favor. And that is how most people acted in Jesus's favor while he walked the earth. Then we also said that favor could be miraculous because we've always defined grace as unmerited favor. So when we go around in life, we somehow default to the fact that um, our favor is unmerited, amen. 
However, even though favor can be miraculous and can be uh, unmerited as we see throughout the pages of scripture and throughout the grace dispensation, there is a dimension of favor that is merited. And that is where the aspect of favor being a principle comes in. Amen. Amen. So we are going to look at all of those so that we, we not only remain in one aspect of favor, the aspect of it being unmerited, Favor can be merited. There is something you can do that will cause people to favor you. It is the word of God. We'll take a look at it together. So, and we concluded here by saying that we are responsible for activating favor in our lives. Last time we spoke about the first point only, and we, we talked about favor with God because we believe that favor with God is the starting point for every one of us if we want to keep increasing in favor because Jesus found favor with God. That is why he could keep increasing um, in favor here on earth, amen. We are even told in Luke 2, 52 that Jesus in, kept increasing in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God, then favor with man, amen. Meaning that you cannot increase in favor with man if you haven't first increased in favor with God. So we spoke at length on this. The tape is online. The recording is online. If you're interested, you can take a look at that. We used um, Queen Esther, Daniel, and Joseph as um, our case studies from last time. Amen. And everyone was sincerely blessed. So tonight, we're going to begin by partaking of the Lord's Supper, and uh, we'll get into the second point for the night. Amen. Hope we all have our elements, our bread and our juice to partake of the Lord's Supper. So we're going to discern the body and the blood of Jesus Christ. But I want to begin by exhorting us with Proverbs 8.35. And I'll read this to us from the New Living Translation and the Amplified Bible Version. The Bible says this, for whoever finds me finds life and receives favor from the Lord. Whoever finds me finds life and receives favor from the Lord. You know, just by taking a look at that particular text and understanding the text, it almost appears like there is a, a progression. There is a prerequisite um, to the next level, meaning that you need to find me. We are going to find out who the me there is. Then we are, after finding the me, then we, we will find life. And after we find life, then we will receive favor from the Lord. So with a scripture like this, you cannot now then think that you will just then obtain favor if you skip the me and the life and then obtain favor. And this is one thing that we need to pay attention to together as a body of Christ to understand that the word of God, the kingdom of God is very systematic. You know, the world has copied the kingdom of God in many ways. The world in its own, it's, we see systems in place. You need, even when you go to school, there are prerequisites to the majors or the minors that we take. So too in the word of God, when we read, let's understand what comes before what. It is in an attempt to um, go ahead of ourselves and undermining the prerequisites that we avoid of results, amen. Now the Amplified Bible now says that for whoever finds me, the me that is wisdom. So meaning when you find wisdom, there is a guarantee that you find life. When you find wisdom, there is a guarantee that you obtain favor and grace from the Lord. Meaning that when we now ignore wisdom, then we have ignored the ability to receive favor. Favor is our subject matter for the night, so we'll stick with that. When we ignore wisdom, then we ignore our ability to obtain favor from the Lord. And what is the wisdom of God? The wisdom of God is his word. There is no way to experience kingdom favor, I would say, without passing through the route of the word of God, the wisdom of God, because it is through the wisdom of God that we do obtain favor. Amen. So with that in mind, we are, we are going to discern the body of Jesus. We just want to look at something that happened 
to Jesus Christ on the cross, which speaks to the subject matter of favor. I'm going to read this um, scripture to us. I'm sorry I didn't have the text, but it's Luke 23 from verse 33. And it says, and when they came to the place called the skull, there they crucified him and the criminals, one on the right and on the left. But Jesus was saying, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots, dividing his garments among themselves. And the people stood by watching. And even the rulers were sneering at him, saying, he saved others. Let him save himself, if this is the Christ of God, the chosen one. The soldiers also ridiculed him, coming up to him, offering him sour wine and saying, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. Now there was also an inscription above him. This is a king of the Jews. Now verse 39 through 43 reads, one of the criminals who were hanged there was hurling abuse at him saying, are you not the Christ? save yourself and us but the one the other responded and rebuking him said do you not even fear god since you are under the same sentence of condemnation and we indeed are suffering justly for we are receiving what we deserve for our crimes but this man has done nothing wrong and he was saying jesus remember me when you come into your kingdom and verse 43 says, and he said to him, truly I say to you, today you'll be with me in paradise, amen. Now this is um, Dr. Luke's rendition of the crucifixion, a portion of it. You know, when Jesus had been placed on the cross, at this point, his blood had been shed at least in six different places. His body had already been broken pending his death because right after this, he died, amen. So he was on this cross, nailed to that cross with in between two thieves. And while he was there, the Bible now tells us that they were casting lots with his garments. But even while they did that, Jesus said something, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Rightfully so, he could ask the Lord to forgive them because his blood had already been shed. Amen. His redemptive blood, because one thing we know about the blood of Jesus is that it redeems and it also um, forgives remission. There is remission in the blood of Jesus and there is redemption in the blood of Jesus. So Jesus could confidently tell the Father that forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. Why? Because he had already made provision for their forgiveness because his blood had been shed. Amen. Now we see here a dimension of favor that was being experienced by people who did not deserve it. Unmerited favor. Amen. He used the opportunity to express favor to them, to dispense favor to them. And like you and I, we are beneficiaries of the shed blood of Jesus Christ. But now look at another dimension of favor that has been expressed in this scripture. Jesus is in between two thieves and one person decides to hurl insults, abuse at Jesus. Then the other one now responds by rebuking his friend by saying that, you know what? Do you not even fear God since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed are suffering justly for we are receiving what we deserve for our crimes. But this man has done nothing wrong. And he was saying, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he said to him, truly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Now, the one thief dishonored Jesus, one thief undermined the work of Jesus Christ on the cross, but another thief honored Jesus, another thief appreciated the work of Jesus Christ, recognized that Jesus Christ was being, was suffering unjustly, but they were suffering justly. And as a result of his honor and recognition of what was happening to Jesus Christ on the cross, he secured favor through honor. He, secu he secured favor with Jesus Christ. Life, a lifetime of favor, I must say, with Jesus Christ. Because, because he recognized Jesus Christ, because he recognized the work of Jesus Christ on the cross at that given moment, he said something. 
He said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Remember me when you come into your kingdom. And then Jesus responded because we said favor is a response. So Jesus responded and said, truly, I say to you, today you'll be with me in paradise. So because of honor, he secured a place. He secured favor. He secured a lifetime of favor with Jesus Christ because of this honor another person lost his place. Right here on the cross, we see during the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, we, we even see how favor was being dispensed. Unmerited, unmerited, amen. If, they, if both thieves recognized the cross, recognized Jesus Christ, they both would have secured a lifetime of favor. But because one person chose to despise, then he lost his place. Beloved, what the Lord is saying here simply is this. When we spend time to discern the body and the blood of Jesus Christ, we are, we are securing for ourselves a lifetime of favor like the thief on the cross. It was just at that moment that he knew about Jesus Christ, but he did not miss the opportunity. He held on to it and he secured his place. What about us who know this story and who are beneficiaries of the understanding of the cross even now? What is the guarantee for us? The guarantee for us is that when we discern, properly discern and appreciate the broken body of Jesus Christ and his blood shed on that cross, we, we too can secure a lifetime of favor with him because the word of God says so. Now, summarily, this is what we are saying. Through honor, the thief on the cross secured the favor of God. The thief properly discerned Jesus Christ even on the cross and reaped the benefit. Therefore, when we continually and effectively recognize or discern the work of Jesus Christ on the cross, we attract a response of favor from him. Amen. Amen. So honoring the work of Jesus Christ on the cross attracts his favor in our direction. Why? Because favor is a response and the kind of favor that it attracts is a lifetime of favor. So we don't have to be the people who experience intermittent favor. One day we are favored, the next day we are not. There is a tool that we can use to attract a lifetime of favor from the Lord. And that tool is called the body and the blood of Jesus Christ. And that is why he said in Luke 23, 43, like we read, and he said to him, meaning Jesus said to the thief, truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Jesus will never die, so the thief will forever be with him. Amen. So too, as we discern the body of Jesus Christ, let's just hold our breath up tonight and just thank him, properly discerning him, properly discerning his body, like that thief on the cross who recognized Jesus, who appreciated the work he did on the cross. With limited knowledge, he was able to secure favor. How much more about us? who know more than the thief on the cross. Let's just lift up our voices and discern the body of Jesus Christ together. As you discern it, you secure for yourself a lifetime of favor. Amen. So let's Amen. do that together. Father, we thank you for the body of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Celebrate the finished work on the cross. Thank you because his body was broken so that ours can be made whole. Yes, Lord. Thank you, oh God. Because his body was broken, every sickness fell on him. Every disease fell on him. And we are no longer victims, oh God, on this earth. We declare wholeness over ourselves tonight because the body was broken so that ours can be made whole. We receive wholeness tonight. We receive understanding from the word tonight because of the broken body of Jesus Christ. We receive strength, health, we receive everything that the body of Jesus died for us to have in Jesus' name. So in tonight, Jesus name. let's just break the bread together and partake. Now we thank you for the blood of Jesus. We thank you for the redemptive power of the blood of Jesus. We thank you because as the blood was shed, we were redeemed. We thank you for remission. 
We thank you for reconciliation between us and you, Lord, because of the blood of Jesus. Yes. We thank you, oh God, that we are no longer victims of our past. Through the blood, we have a new identity. Daddy, we say thank you for the blood that speaks, the blood that has a voice and carries a, a message of mercy, a message which is better, which is nobler and more gracious than the blood of Abel, which cries out vengeance. So we can go to bed every night knowing that the blood speaks for us even while we are silent. Yes. So we thank you, Father, tonight because this reminds us of the, 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 the blood because it advocates for us that when we cannot fight battles for ourselves, we can remember the blood that fights for us because the blood of Jesus advocates for the saints. To you be all glory, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's just partake together. Amen. Amen. Are we together? There's silence in the house. Amen. 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 Thank Amen. you for that. So we're going to go to the second point. We just go by the spirit of the Holy Spirit right now. Um, so we said we're talking about 10 principles that will help to help us continually increase in our favor with people, principles that we can learn from the word of God, amen. And the first we said was um, favor with God because we are told in Luke 2, 52 that and Jesus kept increasing in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and favor with man. So we learned, we understood that increasing in favor with God it's a prerequisite for us to increase in favor with man. Now, when you when you, you when you diagnose spiritually that your your favor with people have re, have decreased, amen. You want to find out how your favor with God is. That's an easy fix, amen. You just increase your time with the Lord and obtain His favor so that it trickles down to your relationships as well. So now the second point is love and faithfulness. Love and faithfulness are two virtues that we can use to secure the favor of people or favor with people. I'll read to us from Proverbs 3, verse 3 to 4, from the New International Version. It says, let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Then you win favor and a good name in the sight of God and man. So what is this scripture saying? He's saying that love and faithfulness, we should never let those two virtues depart from us. And for as long as we keep them, for as long as we cultivate love and faithfulness, there is a guarantee or there are two guarantees. We will win favor and a good name in the sight of two people, in the sight of God and the sight of man. Our interest for tonight is the favor that we win in the sight of man, amen. Now, when we cultivate love, it is very important to the father because it was for that same reason that he sent his son to die on the cross for us. And there is one thing the Bible tells us that we should owe no one anything but love, amen. But when we cultivate love, it is not enough for, for us to win favor with people, amen? Your ability to love many is no guarantee that you're, you're favored by them. The Bible, there was a, that is the reason why love has been paired up with faithfulness, amen? Love and faithfulness, because God looks for that as well. He loves us, but he's looking for those who are faithful as well. To say I love God is one thing, but faithfulness puts your love to action. Amen. It puts the love to action, the words to action. So too, when we say we love people, the proof of our love for them is our faithfulness to them. Amen. So he says, let love and faithfulness never leave us. And by so doing, we secure favor with people. Here, I said something here, which I just want to um, expatiate a little bit. I said, love is not necessarily proof of favor with man. 
because we need to love regardless. We need to love regardless. He, and I also said trust is proof of favor with man because like we already established, we should owe no one anything but love, but we are, there is no obligation in the word of God that we need to trust, amen, because trust is earned. In every relationship, trust is earned. So that a person loves you doesn't mean they trust you. That a person loves you doesn't mean they consider you faithful. So it is important that when it comes to securing favor with a human being or with people, we couple our love for them with our faithfulness. A person can love you even in your mediocrity. A person can love you even when you disappoint them. A person can love you even when they, they cannot rely on you. A person can love you even when they cannot count on your words, amen. So you realize that even though they love you, you have not found favor with them because when opportunities come up, they'll remember your inconsistent behavior and they'll, they'll think of another person whom they love and whom they trust or who has proven faithful and that opportunity of favor will be handed to them, amen. So that is why we need to work in our relationships, how we deal with people. Let your yes be yes, let your no be no. Be sincere in your approach towards people because in so doing, over time, slowly but guaranteed, you build not only love, but you build trust. And what happens, trust eventually evolves to entrust, amen? Where somebody trusts you because of your faithfulness, then they can now start entrusting to you certain things that are not otherwise entrust to you just because they love you. Amen. So it's easy to examine your relationships and know those who trust you or those to know those who love you or those who love and trust you because it will be evident in how much they entrust in you, be it resources, be it in information about your life, be it with your families, you name it, amen. So apart from developing our, our favor with God, we need to develop love and faithfulness, amen. So that people can, so that we can win the favor of people, amen. I believe that is very straightforward. So the third point here is obedience. Obedience is another virtue that we can use to secure favor with people. In Ephesians 6 verse 1, I'll read this to you from the New International Version and the Amplified Bible. It says, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. And then it says in the Amplified Bible, children, obey your parents in the Lord, that is, accept their guidance and discipline as his representatives, for this is right, for obedience teaches wisdom and self-discipline. Now, as I speak to children, the aspect of children, I speak to the aspect of um, biological children, um, spiritual children, adopted children, and all the like. So if, even if you're an adult, you may have a spiritual uh, a parent or a spiritual parent, somebody who covers you, somebody who plays the role of a parent over your life. So all of us fall in this category one way or the other. We're either in the category of parents or children, amen. However, the Bible says that we should obey our parents in the Lord for this is right. Why is this important? It's for the same reasons that we explained about love and faithfulness. If a child, be it a spiritual child or any category of ch children, if a child perpetually shows acts in disobedience towards their parents, over time they lose the favor, they lose favor with their parents. Amen. Do they love you? Absolutely. But do they trust you? No. Do you have their favor, their best interest? At, um, do they have your best interest at heart? Not really. Amen. You know, when you this is very common because you hear some parents say that, you know what, after I leave this earth, I'm going to donate all my resources to an orphanage because I trust that they will properly manage the resources. Why? That is an indication that, yes, I love my children, but they are not worthy of my favor. Because if they had won my favor, I should have entrusted them 
with these responsibilities. I love them, but I don't trust them. So they do not have my favor. I would rather hand everything I have to um, an orphanage or an NGO so they can properly manage the resources. So what are we saying in summary? We're saying here that it is not advisable and it is not wise for us to perpetually live in disobedience and yet think that we will win the favor of people. It doesn't work with God that we live in disobedience with him continually and then expect him to favor us. He will love us, but he wouldn't favor us. And we are uh, created in the image of God. We cannot override what he doesn't like. We can now not say we are super beings that we can trust people whom who perpetually disobey us. If God doesn't accept it, over time we will come to the realization and acceptance that we too cannot because we are created yeah. in the name yeah. of God. Amen. Wow. So if, if, you, if you want to examine how you can increase in favor with people, learn to live in obedience towards authority or your parents or whoever God places in your life. Amen. Now, point number four is good understanding. Through good understanding or through good judgment, we can secure favor with people. It's favor with people. Now, let me read this for us from the Amplified Bible and the New International Version. It says, good understanding, Proverbs 13 verse 15 says, good understanding wins favor from others. But the way of the unfaithful is hard, like barren, dry soil. Amen. Then um, this other part from the NIV says, good judgment wins favor. But the way of the unfaithful leads to their destruction. You see that unfaithfulness doesn't really reap uh, fruits in the kingdom. So it says good judgment wins favor. And I like the fact that it says wins favor from others. Good judgment wins favor from others. What is this saying? Beloved, every relationship thrives on understanding. And when it comes to human to human relationship, it deals with people and people can only unite or agree when there is understanding. Now, if you're in a relationship or relationships and all you exercise is misunderstanding or lack of proper judgment of the other person, it wouldn't take too long for that person to, for you both to lose the favor of each other because misunderstanding or lack of proper judgment of one another is a tool that the enemy uses to split people because those people have lost the favor of one another. But if we follow the principles of the word of God and take our time to understand people, why they do things a certain way, why they are at this stage in their life, just whatever we can possibly ask so that we understand. What that process will do for us is that it's going to eliminate a lot of misconception, poor judgment of others, um, a critical mindset towards people. Because there are so many things about people that we need to understand when it comes to culture or age difference or just you name it. But it takes a mind that desires to understand people a mind that desires to win the favor of people, for us to take that time to understand. And in the process of us understanding, we now act favorably towards each other. And as a result, we secure the favor of one another. Amen. Jesus exemplified this in many ways. When he spoke in parables, he spoke in the language that the people understood. As a result, he won the favor of the people. Amen. Because he exercised good understanding and good judgment even in his speech. And as a result, he was able to win their favor. He did so many things. He became like us to communicate how life should be. He did not stay in heaven and communicated how life should be on earth. He came to our level 
and to communicate and demonstrate that to us. So too, sometimes for us to win the favor of people, we need to get to where they are. We need to humble ourselves and submit ourselves to certain levels so that we can understand them and rise together with them. But if we always stand at the pinnacle and speak to people at the, in the valley, then there will always be this miscommunication and misjudgment and misunderstanding. And the result of it is lack of favor between both parties, amen. So here, um, these are some noteworthy points. People like to be understood. Beloved people, every one of us will love to be understood. It is not possible that everyone will understand them, but I'm communicating to us the desire of humanity's heart. People love to be understood. And people do not just want to be understood, but they want to be understood in context. They want you to understand, okay, that I'm going through this, possibly because of this. If you give them the permission to express themselves and them knowing that you will not judge them in the process. Because people love, humanity loves to be understood and loves to be understood in context. Now, a critical spirit or critical mindset usually stems from misjudgment, misunderstanding, maybe by the culture, because of the culture, age, race, education, exposure, past or present experiences, and more. These are all contributing factors that lead to us having a critical spirit and a critical mindset. And it's just a word of caution for us. If we truly desire to increase in favor with man, then we need to drop the critical spirit and mindset and seek to understand people in the context in which they find themselves. Now I said here that good understanding will help us relate with people better and avoid judging them, amen, and avoid judging them. And good judgment helps us wear the shoes of other people or of another person, amen. So if, if you want to secure the favor with a person or people, learn, let's learn to practice good judgment and good understanding, amen. So we've talked about um, how to secure favor with um with how to continually increase in favor with people. And we've talked about uh, the favor of God. We've talked about love and faithfulness. We've talked about obedience. And we've talked about good judgment. These are all tools that we can place in our bags as we go around and like principles, activate them depending on the circumstance that you find yourself. You may be in a situation where you're really obedient but just maybe you have not exercised um, good judgment, amen? So you may get into your toolbox, activate good judgment and work it out. And you begin to see the results because the word of God is true. Now, the last point that I would like us to take a look at tonight is the aspect of honor and respect. As we're partaking of the Lord's Supper, we said something very serious that the thief, one thief on the cross secured a lifetime of favor with Jesus Christ because he honored Jesus. Another person lost his position because he dishonored Jesus. Now, honor and respect is or are tools that we can use to secure favor with people. Beloved, if you've been in any kind of relationship, mother, daughter, uh, mother, son, husband, wife, just casual friends on the job, you name it. We've been in all kinds of relationships because we are relational beings. You realize that you quickly lose favor with anyone who perpetually dishonors you and disrespects you because it's like a poison that has been released in the atmosphere. Amen. So when we live with people, the least we can do, irrespective of age or status in, stat, status in society, we need to practice a culture of honor and respect. You don't need to know the title that a person carries in order to honor and respect them. A person doesn't need to be your age mate or older than you for you to honor and respect them. You do not even need to work in the same company for you to offer honor, deep honor and respect for people. Make it your mantra for life that whoever I meet, I honor. Whomever I meet, I respect. 
By so doing, we quickly gain the favor of people. Let honor be a culture for you and your household. Honor people, respect them regardless, amen? Because by honoring and respecting, we're emulating Jesus Christ. That's exactly what he did for us. Uh, he did um, here on earth. And the least we can do is just practice his examples, amen? Now the Bible tells us in Psalm 145 verse 19, and I'll read this to us from the common English Bible. It says, God shows favor to those who honor him, listening to their cries for help and saving them. I'll read this again. God shows favor to those who honor him, listening to their cries for help and saving him. Now, one of the ways that you will know that God has shown you favor is when you start, you and I begin to increase in favor with people. That is the manifestation of the favor of God in everyday life. Amen. So he shows favor to those who honor him, meaning when you take time to honor God, it manifests in your relationships with other people. But when we dishonor God, we lose favor with him and then it manifests in our relationships with people. So this is a very critical point. God shows favor to those who honor him. Now, if we will not honor God, it is people will react to our dishonor. And the reason is because humanity is created in the image of God. Each one of us are beneficiaries of the breath of God. He has breathed, breath, breathed his spirit into us. We carry his spirit, we carry his character. We respond to the things he responds to positively or negatively. Now we cannot override honor or we cannot override our relationship with him and think we can flow with the world. After a while, it's going to catch up with us, amen. Now let's look at an example of Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ um, came to earth as a human being to demonstrate to us that this aspect of honor and respect is a very big deal. Never being a person who says that, you know, oh, I don't care if they respect me or not, that's deception. Now you're not only deceiving yourself, you're deceiving the people around you. But for a person who knows the truth, they know that nobody endures disrespect for life. Nobody does. Because it is not in our nature to be, to be that way. Amen? Just like nobody endures ungratefulness for life. Because it is not in our nature to be that way. God even gives it as a command. Give thanks. Amen. He's not asking our opinion. He wants us to give thanks to him. He wants us to honor him. He gives it as a command. Then how can we now then say that we can override what God likes and think we can live void of those things that he has created us to like? Now, let's look at something. Mark chapter 6 from verse 4 to 5. It says something. It says, Jesus said to them, a prophet is not without honor except in his own town, among his relatives, and in his own home. He could not do any miracles there except lay his hands on a few sick people and heal them. Amen. Now, Jesus recognized something, and he said that a prophet is not without honor in his own town, amongst his relatives, and in his own home. Can we attest to that, that in your own town, people have shown gross disrespect and dishonor towards you amongst your relatives the same way and among in your own home, there is disrespect and, and dishonor right around you. It, it's not a new thing. Jesus saw it. Jesus experienced it. Jesus spoke about it. And the Bible says because of that dishonor, because of that disrespect, he could not do any miracles there except lay his hands on a few people and heal them. What are we seeing here? Jesus came to help people, to heal people, to, to take care of the sick and all of those, amen? But because he was dishonored, the Bible says that he could not do any miracles there on, except lay his hands on a few sick people. Why? Because he, he had lost 
um, the people had lost the favor of God in that area or the favor of Jesus Christ in that area. And as a result, he couldn't do much because this honor, disrespect shuts the door of favor between human beings to human beings. And Jesus, that was exemplified in the life of Jesus Christ. So what are we saying? There is no way that you endure disrespect and dishonor from people or a given person and then give them your best. It's not possible, wasn't possible with Jesus, will not be possible with us. Amen. We cannot override the things that happened to Jesus and think that we can make it happen here on earth. He already established it as a principle, not that we should become disrespectful to others, but rather be respectful to people and be honorable to people or treat people with honor in your own town, in, amongst your relatives and in your own home. And as a result, you get the best of them. You, ex, you secure favor with them. So the end that when opportunities come, they think about you because of how well you have treated them. So here I said that there is not much we can gain from a person who whom we despise. If you despise a person, even at heart, we are spirit beings. You just wouldn't get much from them. It's just what it is. Amen. So let's begin to secure our favor with people by treating them properly, by giving them honor and respect. And like an equation, everybody will just come in your direction because they like what and how you speak to them how you treat them. They feel good being around you. More than what you say, how they feel is what they will live with, amen. So I said, there is not much we can gain from a person whom we despise, even when they attempt, they, because this honor and disrespect shuts a door. So even if you forcefully try to open that door, you can only do so much. Like Jesus, he only laid hands on a few sick people and healed them, amen. Now we are concluding because this is our last point. I'm just going to read to us from Matthew um, chapter 10 from verse 40 to 42. It says this, he who receives you receives me. This is Jesus speaking. And he who receives me receives him who sent me. Meaning you've received God because Jesus Christ sent him. So if you receive Jesus, if you receive his disciples, you receive him. If you receive him, then you have received God. Then he says, he who receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And he who receives a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. And whoever gives one of these little ones only a cup of cold water in the name of a disciple, as surely I say to you, he shall by no means lose his reward. Amen. Now, there are many things we can glean from this portion of scripture, but this is what I want us to focus on. There are different categories of people here. There is a category of the disciple, um, the prophet, the righteous one, Jesus, God himself. Now, depending on how you receive a person, that is what you will get from that person. Depend because if you have a sister and you and that sister is a pastor or a woman of God and so on, and you, all you do is receive that sister or brother as a sister. Well, we come from the same mother, we grew up together. I changed your napkin. You know how the story goes. So who are now? Who are you now to tell me about God and all of that? Well, you receive the blessing of a sister, and that is perfectly okay too, if that is what you desire. But if you recognize the office of that person from them without any force or anything, like we said, favor is a response, you will automatically start receiving the blessing of a minister of the word of God. That is why we shouldn't be too casual in our relationships. Let's learn to recognize the offices of people the best we can. And that is why our default should be a culture of honor, meaning that in the absence of you not knowing the office that a person carries, you can still give them the honor and respect that is due them. But when you know that a person is a prophet, a person is an evangelist, a person is a teacher, a person is uh, an apostle, and, and, evan and all of those, and any other office that the Lord, um, that the Lord has placed upon them, you want to recognize them. For your good, 
if you want the blessing, there is no obligation, amen? But it is clear in scripture that if you receive a prophet in the name of a prophet, you will receive a prophet's reward. But if you just receive this, this what the, um, your brother and sister as a righteous man and woman, you receive a righteous man's reward as well. The question is, how far do you want to go? There's some things in life that we can bypass because of honor. There are steps that we can skip in life because of honor. So the question to you and I tonight is how far do we want to go and how quickly, how quickly do we want to get there? Amen. So in conclusion, I said, therefore, how a person is received will determine what you get from them, including favor. If a person relates with you and know that if a person who is a minister of the word or who has a calling, a specific calling in their lives relates with you and know that you are a person who despises um, those who are called, when opportunities arise, they will never call you. They will never say, but after understanding you, they will know that being around you is not the best place for ministers to be because you have a great depth of dishonor towards them. They will just understand and they'll keep it because automatically you've lost favor in that area and the door has been shut permanently for you until the attitude changes, amen? Because nobody will know that you offer so much disrespect and we want to um, cause others to come and benefit from that, from that, amen? So we need to be careful how we deal with one another because people watch, people observe and when opportunities come, you can either benefit from it because you have won the favor of that person or not. Amen. So this brings us to the end of part two. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you so much, Dr. Mufang. Amen. Awesome teacher. I would just want us to pray much pressing the volume is low no can you hear me can you hear me i can hear you okay yeah i just want us to pray and emphasize on this point what i took is that love goes with trust you know so i just want us to pray for ourselves and for our loved ones that as much as we love let us be trustworthy. Let us pray that God will help us. Any one of us, any area in our lives where we have lost trust, where people are not able to trust us because of that, I just want us to pray this evening that God will help us, you know, to be able to look into that critically and understand that our love cannot go without trust. So let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you this evening for the teaching. We thank you for your word. We thank you, O oh God, because you have unveiled this word and we have gained understanding. Father God Almighty, normally I would say I love and I never paid attention that love goes with trust. But this evening, O oh Father, as you have revealed this to us, O oh God, I pray over my life in Jesus' name, O oh God, that any area of my life that has been shady, O oh God, and has caused anyone not to trust me. I pray, Father, that your light will shine upon it, O oh God, and bring it to the surface in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord God Almighty, I pray that my life, O oh Father, will reflect the life of Christ and that others will trust me. Your word tells us that we are the light of the world. And Father, I just pray this day, O oh God, that I will shine, I will not be dimmed, O oh Father, by lack of trust in the name of Jesus. Yes, in the name of Jesus. Father, help me to be trustworthy and help me, oh Father, to see the good in others in the name of Jesus. I pray, oh God, for every loved one of mine, oh God, that Lord, you will work on them, oh God, and any area of their lives, oh Father, that has been an obstacle causing others not to trust them in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray this evening, oh God, that you will shine your light upon it, oh God, and remind us, oh Father, that we are representatives of Christ on earth and we need to be trustworthy. Father, we thank you because we know mm -hmm. you hear us as we pray. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. 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 Amen.
another point is honor and respect attract favor. And sometimes we don't honor the people we are supposed to honor. Just like uh, Dr. Mildred said, sometimes people wait for titles, sometimes people wait for other people to, you know, be attracted to someone before they even prove like they have any, any interest or honor for that person. So I just want us to pray that God will rip every pride of us, whatever is standing in the way and making us not to give honor to who honor is due, that this day or onward, our lives, you know, as much as our lives will be honorable in the same way we will honor others in Jesus' name. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, oh God, for being my God. I thank you again, oh Father, because I know that your word is true. I know that your word is powerful. I know your word is your breath. Father, I pray that as your word has come forth today, oh Papa, let it bring new life in me. Oh God, I pray that this word will cause me to be honorable in the mighty name of Jesus. And in the same way, I pray, oh Father, that you will help me to be able to honor those who are due honor in the name of Jesus. Open my eyes, oh Father, and draw my heart to that which is close to you. Father, I pray, oh Father, that you will make me, oh Father, this evening, mold me, oh God, to be the one, oh Father, who gives honor to anyone that deserves to be honored in the name of Jesus, oh God. I pray, oh Father, that despite their age, despite their, their office, whatever it may be, oh God, let me give them the honor that is due them in the name of Jesus. And I pray, oh Father, that you will bring me to this truth, oh Father, that I know from this day onward that as i honor i will attract favor mm -hmm. and i pray also even for my loved ones oh father that you will take away the spirit of pride oh god that they will not be prideful in jesus name they will not mm -hmm. be proud oh father but that they will be submissive and give honor to anyone oh father that you have honored in jesus name we have prayed amen 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 amen, and amen. amen. Just want us to pray this evening also for one of our sisters, Pastor Hannah. Her husband had a serious car accident yesterday with their son who was driving. And uh, thank God that he's out of the hospital, but he was unconscious for a while. And uh, but finally they got him stabilized and everything. And today he was discharged. So I just mm -hmm. want us to pray for him for steady recovery and also to cover him with the blood of Jesus. Amen. and cover every one of us on the prayer line mm -hmm. with the blood of jesus that Amen. accident will not be any one of us our portion i just want us to pray father in the name of jesus we thank you for the life of pastor ephraim in the name of jesus oh god we thank you for saving his life we thank you for your hand upon his life oh god we thank you for the angels that you dispatched that held him oh father away from harm lord god we thank you oh god for the miracle upon his life and the life of his son lord we pray and we say his healing is complete in the name of jesus we bring him to you right now, oh Father. We say anything in him, oh Father, that even the hospital did not pick, oh Father. We pray that your hand will be upon him and complete your healing process in Jesus' name. Father, we pray for each and every one of us, oh God, and we say this night, oh Father, we will trust in you and you alone and know, oh God, that accident is not our portion. We bind you, spirit of accident, whatever, whichever direction you are coming from, we say you will have no effect on any one of us in Jesus and we have prayed amen. 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 We can hear you. Do you have any other prayer requests before we round up for the evening? Does anybody have? I I do have a few prayer, just three verses here that I would like for us to just um pray on as well. In addition to what you said, um, just so that we have, we know that that the scriptures are in the Word of God. Um, we've already talked about the aspect of honor, but I want us to see here this in Psalm 30, verse five. It says, "For his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime." That's the emphasis. His favor lasts a lifetime. So. It's good for us to know that the word of God says so, so that it, we are not just imagining things or thinking that we can go um, 
go around living life with intermittent, intermittent favor. The, the favor of God lasts a lifetime. So let's just declare it. Let's just believe it. Let's let it become our new reality. When people don't favor us, it is not the will of God. Amen. It is not the will of God because his favor lasts a lifetime. So as a matter of fact, every day we should be experiencing favor. Favor should be dispensed to us daily. A day should not, we shouldn't put our heads on a pillow on one day and say we did not experience favor. Then we know that the enemy is at work. Let's always default to Psalm 30 verse 5 remembering that the favor of God lasts a lifetime. A life, lifetime means a lifetime. Amen. Throughout your life. Amen. Amen. That's what I want to say. Lord, we thank you for just reassuring us through your word that your favor yes, lasts a lifetime. So when we go around life, we are confident that we experience the favor daily. And when days go by, opportunity passes, but we know that it is not your perfect word. Because we have seen it very clearly in your word. So therefore, we claim the lifetime of favor upon our lives and upon those connected. For everyone understand, we claim the lifetime of favor. It is our new reality. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Have a testimony. my mother-in-law passed and the preparation has not been easy so there is one church that the children had uh, negotiated with we were viewing and they said it and when we went there thinking that we were just going there to sign the paperwork they told us that they, they didn't realize that they had a conference that would go all the way through the weekend so it wasn't available so as we were looking for a place, you know, another location where we could have the room, um, I was just thinking and I was calling all these different friends and, you know, pastors. I went to some churches and they didn't accept. So as I sat in the car in the parking lot, I just thought, and I recalled that we used to fellowship in a church in Laura. So I tried to call the bishop and she was not available at the time. And then I called one of the associate pastors. And he just said, oh, I'll talk with the bishop. Tomorrow is Sunday, so I'll talk with the bishop and I'll get back to you. So he spoke with the bishop and he called me back and he said, you know, all you have to do is just give me the information, the time, you know, the date, and then we'll take care of everything else. And I recall this pastor's wife telling me that, why are you bothered about this? You know, when God has sent you destiny helpers, don't bother throughout this period because many people will be there to support you. Anything that you think about and it's like a challenge, know that God has already set people on your path to just take care of it. So just relax. And <laughs> the day they called me to the church to go and sign, they just kept telling me like, well, Reverend Kennedy will take care of this. Well, the bishop is going to do this. All this, And they didn't ask me for a dime. And then I was asking, so are we going to give an offering like during the service? And they were like, well, they've never experienced that. That's not something common to them, you know. So they've never really like had an offering during a funeral service, which means even that they didn't really, in short, all we have to do is just bring the body, give them the program, bring the pastor who, you know, do the, the sermon. And they are often, their, their church uh, choir as well. And they were even asking us if we want a live stream, if we want to, I was like, oh God, this could only be God. Because we, we, we moved from there since 2013. And I'm surprised that they, they offered this. But thank God even for the associate pastor who stood in the gap for us as well. So this is a testimony just to remind us that while we are, bothered about so many things and responsibilities. You know, God does it in a way that is way better than what we were expecting to do. Because had it been the other church had accepted, we would have been paying so much money. It's just for their facility and, you know, 
every other thing. But for this one, it was sitting right there free. And thank God for the Holy Spirit even to have directed us to, you know, finally call this place after every other place had failed. So God is good and gracious. And I just want to share this testimony to remind us that whatever it is that you may be struggling with or wondering how you will do it, God has already gone ahead of you and taken care of it. So I'm grateful for that which he has done. Amen. 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 Thank you for sharing. <laughs> Amen. So, um, I think Pastor Jones will close us today, please. Okay. Pastor Jones? Okay. She's trying to come up. Oh, okay. okay. I think her audio is um, giving her some. Okay. Okay. Can you hear me better now? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Did you ask me to close out? Yes, please. Okay. So let me get my points. Thank you. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name, Father. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we thank you and praise you for all that was said. We thank you for the teaching by the Holy Spirit through the way of Dr. Mildred. We bless your holy name, O oh God. We thank you for favor with you, Father. We thank you for unmerited favor and, and merited favor. We thank you for love and faithfulness. We thank you for good judgment to win favor with others. We thank you for honoring those that, whether we know them or know them not, just people on a whole, to honor them and to respect them, according to your word in 147, uh, Psalms 145, 19. And we bless your holy name, O God, for favor to win in the sight of man. Glory to God for whatever purpose that you'd have us to win it. So God, we just give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. We thank you for shifting our mindset in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, for every area that we fall short based on what we're teaching tonight, we just honor you right now. And we ask you, Lord God, to let that thing become rhema in the name of Jesus Christ. Rhema down to our soul even to our subconscious. So, Father, we just give you praise and glory and honor that favor, respect, and faithfulness would be one that would become a part of our character in such a way that it will be us in the name of Jesus Christ. We wouldn't have to concern ourselves with doing it because it, it would be a part of us. So, Father, we just bless you tonight. We praise you for your love, your mercy, and your grace towards us. Had you not loved us so much, you would not even concern yourself with us knowing this. So, God, we just we just thank you. Thank you for it, oh God. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for how you're changing us. Thank you for how you're shifting us. Thank you, Father God, for just loving us so much that you allow this word to go forth. And so for this, we are grateful on tonight. Bless each and every one of us on the line that heard the word today. Let us not be just hearers, but let us become doers of your word that we might be able to share this with someone to help transform their lives in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Oh, grace together. <laughs> In the grace of our Lord and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest, reign, rule, and abide now and forever. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. 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 Have a good night, everyone. Amen. Thank you. Awesome Bye. Teaching. Thank you so Thank you, much. Beautiful. Sister Thank you. Sister 